And welcome to another edition of Thoughts of the Roundtable with me, Matt Rebar. And me, Paul Laux. And Paul, how are you? What's new? What's shaking? Good. I feel animated today. I feel very good. I've been probably the busiest I've been all year, but I feel very good tonight, and I don't know why. Probably because I'm doing this. I'm very excited. Oh, well, that makes me feel special. Mm-hmm. Oh. No, I love doing this because I, I feel like this is kind of our version of a diary, and so... It's know, like a 20, verbal diary. Yeah, 20 years from now, I'm going to listen back and be like, oh, those were the times when me and Paul dude, did the I podcast. Even, truthfully, I don't even think about... Dude, that just... Now that depressed me, honest to God. Because <laughs> think about it. We're going to be like... 60 years old. One of us probably won't be here because of a heart attack. Oh my and god. So... <laughs> <laughs> that really got dark. I, I was trying no, to be sentimental. But just think about it. Okay, just think about it. We're going to be okay. 60 years old and, mm-hmm. think, and we're going to sound so young and vibrant and vivacious and it's yeah. just going to be, you know, at that time we're going to oh, you know. Yeah, we're still shaky in voice. that point where like, you know, we're not super jaded. At least I don't think I'm jaded at all. Maybe like a little bit, but like, I don't know how you feel, like how jaded you feel. But man, 20, 30 years from now, we're just going to be like, screw our young selves for trying to gonna hate get myself. the world. Yeah. Oh, 100%. We're going to be like, screw you thinking you can have your cake and eat yeah. it too. What but... did we think we were doing? You thought somebody was going to listen to this crap? <laughs> like, but, uh, come on. Anywho. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. 30 hit me hard a little bit. Yeah, I think well, 30, it's a, well, it's a big number. Right? I mean, well, it's a, also thirty combined with having a kid. Mm-hmm. Having a kid will really make you think about life, especially well, then, when you write your will. Man, that's <laughs> effed up. It, it is weird, man. It is. I weird. need a will. I need to write a will. Otherwise, yeah, I got to do that. So thanks for reminding me because I'm really it's, bad at adulting. <laughs> it's not. It's a very uh, disturbing process. It really, mm-hmm. really is because it just yeah. makes you think. It's like, oh my god, like. And it's so funny. He goes, do you want to declare which assets go to who when you die? I'm like, I don't have any assets. I have nothing. What am I, I going to give? I'll give my you my microphone. Set? You can have my microphone. Yeah. <laughs> you can have my drum set and my old skins. I mean, listen, if there is, if the drum set's not up for grabs, I'll take the drum set. <laughs> I, have been very n- <laughs> I have been very nostalgic lately. I was thinking about college and all the fun I used mm-hmm. to have living in a dorm room. Just the weird <laughs> stuff we used to do. Yeah. I get in the, I get in a really weird headspace when I start to do that kind of stuff. I really got to stop that. I really do. Yeah. Enjoy I mean, I, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, if I wasn't waking up weekdays at four forty five uh, a.m. in the morning, I would still be going out. It's probably redundant. like half the week. I'd be like margarita Tuesdays, uh, tequila Wednesdays, vodka Thursdays. You know, because before I was waking up that early. Let me tell you, I was going out half the week. You were. I remember back, yeah. in the day, back in the day. I used no, to have I, friends and a social life, and then I got a full time job, and that all went out the window. <laughs> remember when we used to hang out in person? Yeah, I'd come I to vi- your you place. Know what I vividly remember one of my favorite moments mm-hmm. uh, that of my youth is when we were going to a sweater party for work, and you did a cartwheel down East Ninth. You remember that? Uh, yes, uh, a little guilty, <laughs> I'll admit. Uh, as we were in cat uh, sweaters. Oh, I mean, I still think I'm, I still think I'm fun, flirty, and like, you, you know, social, but I mean, between the pandemic, between being like an adult, between like, you know, I work like six days a week. I mean, mm-hmm. like, no joke, I'm out here trying to like, seize my cake and eat it too. Uh, it's just, it's hard, you know? Back when I was 22, and like, I was a loser with like, you know, jobs that like, you Living know, we're like, wah, wah. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, it was different. You know, I could go get margaritas every day, but I do miss those times. Like, I just remember, you know, even after like right after college, I would just like, you know, and I'm going to my, my dude's house tonight and I'd be there till, you know, midnight or 1 a.m. just playing games stuff. Mm-hmm. Now I can't do now. It's like if I want to do literally anything, it's like, where's the baby going to go? Yeah. And it's yeah. crazy, man. But going off the pandemic, I it, this, this, this kind of relates to it well, relates to it directly. Have you seen Bo Burnham's new special? No, everyone's been talking about it. It's on my list. It is depressing. It oh, is, it cool. is pretty tough because basically, if you don't know the synopsis, and you probably do, but I'll just explain it. Um, I didn't know this, but apparently he hasn't performed for a number of years, and that was because he um, started to get really, really, really bad panic attacks while up on stage, hmm. and just had was bad in a bad headspace. So he took some time off, a couple years, and. Um, in January of 2020, he came to this epiphany. He's like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm in a good headspace. I'm going to go out there and perform again. January of 2020, he decides that. And then obviously <laughs> everything caves in. Yeah. So he spent the year, um, 2020, 
locked in a room basically just recording songs and bits yeah. and so it progresses over the course of a year and you can just basically see his mental state just slowly mm-hmm. cave in on itself and yeah. it's pretty it's pretty dark it's pretty dark but yeah, it's... I will I will say you know I, I'm not trying to say let's do another pandemic you know I'm not that extreme I for what it was worth I think my my pandemic my quarantine was good I mean did a lot of creative did a lot of me time you know learn to appreciate certain things more learn to be alone and love that by myself you know took huge journeys started school bought a house because you know I was saving up all this money because instead of spending you know a thousand bucks a month on entertainment and drinks I was saving all this money and you know being able to do these things for my future so for me and I know a lot of people probably disagree I I had a fortunate time i was lucky you know still had a job still had jobs and um yeah i i don't regret i'm not the kind of person who's like well if 2020 didn't have a pandemic like that's just not my lifestyle um but i can get why for some people that was really frustrating i i think i was talking to somebody about this today because i really kind of got retrospective lately Mm -hmm. about the whole last year of 2020 because really in it i was so concerned with other things that I didn't really realize what was going around me because a month after, well, I had uh, my kid a month before the lockdown happened. So basically what happened was is Katie and I had our first kid and then immediately everything went into lockdown. We couldn't see anything. So we're trying to be first time parents with an infant in quarantine and, you know, stay at home orders and stuff. And it was insane looking, I don't know how we got through it. Mm -hmm. And looking back at it, when I was in it, there was times when I, it, it, things got pretty tough and rough. But for the most part, I, I was pretty even keeled. But looking back, I, c- I can definitely see some of the mistakes I made personally and some of the, the weird things that I think we made as like a society. And the one thing that really bothers me now that I think about it, um, and it was kind of, it's kind of a result of something that we didn't, we didn't, this wasn't the, the the thing we were trying to make happen but it's what did happen an unexpected consequence is the essential and non-essential thing i Mm -hmm. think looking back that really kind of screwed with people's heads and i even think it kind of messed with mine to be honest because i lost my job for a little bit too and i was kind of grouped in with that non-essential field and i think it really messed me up more than i really realized and at the time it didn't, but looking back now, I'm like, I, you know, even I feel it a little bit now. It's like, man, mm-hmm. we really did kind of split people up into like two, like essential and non-essential mm-hmm. groups. And it's kind of crazy when you think about that, would that actually happen? But, mm-hmm. um, and it was kind of an unintended consequence, but Hey, I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's to my rant about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and you, you got to look at some of the good things too, that have, I think happened because of this. I mean, cleaning procedures, I think are up across the board. I'm going to have like, hand sanitize my car forever. Now. <laughs> it was just crazy to think about companies that were like, listen, you know, we know there's a pandemic. We're going to like start using Clorox. We're going to start like wiping <laughs> things down. Like, why weren't you doing yeah, that in the no, first I was, place? I was going to say something. It's like, don't worry. With the pandemic, we're going to clean now. It's like, bitch, you weren't cleaning before. Like, what were you like, doing before? Listen, we know there's dust bunnies in the corner that we never took a, we never cared about, but now we're going to care. We're going to really care. So you, you got to think that things like that, like, okay, that was what we needed. And another thing that I think was good was it, it went to show you how important retail restaurant workers, you know, truckers, et cetera, man. Oh, I feel bad. And, but here's, what's interesting. I mean, you look at the data, retail workers are leaving more than ever before and it's forcing retailers are leaving. You you said, yeah, leaving in big numbers. It's forcing, you know, chain retail. They're stepping up their wage. Chipotle went up two bucks for their minimum wage. I think that's now minimum 13 or 14. And it goes to show you too, that this was a good time hopefully, and moving forward for those industries that, you know, are so used to being paid abysmally and yet doing such hard work, such hard labor, dealing with the worst people. I mean, you go to any retailer, I don't care if you go to Walmart or Target, there are the worst people who are just demeaning customers, demeaning patrons, employees. I mean, these people deserve to be paid 20 minimum, I would even say 25, just to deal with the emotional and physical and mental work. It's crazy. It is amazing how I was reading an article a couple weeks ago about how there's obviously the big push that, you know, people don't, don't want to go back to work, which is not true mostly. 
Um, people are just don't go, aren't going back to those jobs. Yes, I think I think the restaurant culture seriously going to have to rethink a lot of things. And it is weird that it it took a pandemic to do it. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't think restaurants are going to be able to survive on the salaries they had pre pandemic. Mm-hmm. I don't think they are. I think they're going to have yeah. to, and just industries in general, because people are just going to go to that. Because now, mm-hmm. forget the um, the salary aspect of it. It's it's proved then that it's not as you know a um, protected job as they really thought as a guaranteed yeah. thing, and so it, it's been interesting to see how Cedar Point right around us they were having staffing troubles for a long time. Mm-hmm. They uh, bumped up their minimum salary to twenty dollars an hour, and they got a flood of applications. Yeah, absolutely. And so and good on them. Good on them a for doing that because um, they can afford it. I'm sure. And then B, what it's going to do, it's going to force other businesses around them to adapt. You know, well, actually, like. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Because oh, go there, ahead. There's, there is a point to that. Ironically enough, the city of Sandusky said because they raised their wage and people are going to Cedar Point, it mm-hmm. weirdly created a employee vacuum in Sandusky. Mm-hmm. And like, there's nobody who worked the bars now around, like, on the outside. And guess what? Guess what? You got to step up. You got to step up. And here's the truth. Okay, let's say I'm working in Sandusky for $8 an hour. Let's say I'm working... Oh, let's say I'm a bartender or a server in Sandusky. I'm getting paid $3 an hour and tips, all right? Is that really what bartenders make? I honestly don't know. Oh, I mean, I think the minimum wage for tip employees, it's like two-something. And you, you barely see any of that money. Fell into that. I'm you barely see. It. Yeah, I mean, let, let's say I'm working for like the worst... Like, like they're not even paying me five, six, eight bucks. Like, they're paying me two, three bucks an hour, and then I get my tips. And let's say the let's say it's toxic. Let's say the boss sucks. Clearly, he does if he's paying his servers yeah. and bartenders two bucks an hour. Not great. Well, of course, I would leave to go to Cedar Point for twenty an hour. Let's say let's say though I'm working at a bar or a restaurant. I'm being paid as a server bartender even ten an hour plus tips. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't leave because arguably, if it's a good place of business, you're maybe clearing twenty bucks an hour on tips minimum. It's 30 an hour. I mean, I could definitely see. I, I, I kind of get the point. Uh, well, you know what? I Just forget that point. It's it's going to be a wrong point. I changed my mind in that. My point That's is, good. if I'm a server or a bartender and I'm getting paid a really decent min- um, decent wage, you know, six, seven, eight bucks, and I'm averaging more than 20 an hour, I wouldn't leave. But it's telling me that in Sandusky, these places, they're being paid abysmally. And there's not a huge flow of tips or people right. don't tip, whatever, you know, or if it's takeout and no one tips on takeout, right? Heck yeah. Go to Cedar I, Point. I, you know what's funny? I was at Kalahari recently, just the other week or whatever. The bartenders there, full time. They get 401k. They really? get vacation time. A.S. So you want you want to tell me, Paul, that you want to tell me that one of those full time four hundred one k vacation or bartenders from Kalahari left for Cedar Point? Of course not. Of course <laughs> not. Because they're making more than twenty an hour and they got the benefits. So it's people need to step up. And local businesses, listen, I am a huge personal local. I am huge local business. Like go local businesses. You know, this is why the government needs to help these local businesses, because if these local businesses are struggling to hire people, you know, at a high cost, we need to have a program where we can subsidize what people deserve to be making with that local business, you know? Well, I am actually curious, and only time will tell on this one, if maybe it isn't, maybe it isn't a salary thing. Maybe people just generally don't want to work in food service anymore. Maybe I think so. A- I mean, I'm wondering if these, you know, restaurants will raise their salaries, raise minimum wage, and if the employees still don't come back, that means it's an industry thing. Mm -hmm. It's no longer a salary thing. And I don't know if that's – I could be just, you know, pulling that out of nowhere, but maybe it is. I don't know. Um, Uh, Another thing, too, to think about is movie theaters. You've worked – yeah. You've worked – we kind of have two different backgrounds here, which is kind of – I did a lot of retail with Giant Eagle and uh, grocery Mm -hmm. stores. You did it with the service industry. Your bartender, your service. Yeah, I worked. Bre- I worked like a winter at Barnes and Noble. Thought I'd love it because of books and stuff. It was a cult. But, like, <laughs> but you and I both realized that those are the two industries that mm-hmm. are the most brutal. Oh they yeah, are horrible. And so after this whole thing went down, I don't even know if a higher wage is going to be enticing enough to get people back no. to that. I think people just generally saw mm-hmm. this, and maybe the people obviously. People are obviously going to be working these jobs, but maybe mm-hmm. a lot of people are saying, you know what? I'm going to 
figure something else out, get more training, and do something else. Yeah, and just not go back at all, no matter what the salary yeah. is. I, I, I mean, there was there was an article. This uh, it was I think New York Times or Bloomberg, and the one lady she was working at Walmart or something, being paid eleven bucks an hour, left to take a job. It was like thirteen bucks an hour at like a, a at like a law firm. So it goes to show you that like mm-hmm. it's not like she's making substantially more. You know, I mean, sure, that two bucks an hour, it adds up. That's maybe 20 bucks extra a day, sure, you know, which I guess some might say in the grand scheme isn't much. Whatever you want to say. The point being, though, she's like, I feel so much better because better she's doing her own too. work. She's not dealing with the customers. It's not even about the pay. It's really about the culture, you know. It, 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 this whole thing is going to be a culture shock to our um, just our general work attitude. I really think it is. More so than even the salaries. I think people just, some industries might not, will suffer because of it. Because people are just going to be fed up and not want to go back. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't think it's, I think it's more than even service and, you know, retail. Mm-hmm. But the only thing I don't like is when there, and you see this more so with local businesses. You do, I, trust me, I'm all about it too. But you do see this happen more with that is that they almost blame people for not wanting to come work for them, which is a mm-hmm. weird move. It just seems like a weird move to me. Instead of making your business seem enticing and getting people to work there, you're more like, well, you're almost like blaming people who don't work there for your problems. Mm-hmm. They're not. Nobody's entitled to work at your place. Those those signs that were good. Well, remember those signs? And for those who move. aren't sure, a lot of businesses have these signs where it's like, we're understaffed. Um, please thank yeah, the people that decided wants, to work. No one wants to work, to work anymore. anymore. And it's like, yeah, no one wants to work nine bucks an hour in your crappy industry. You know, I'm sorry. I, it's just okay. not going to happen. If I was saying, hey, I need a restaurant, uh, you know, any sort of job. I need a quick mm. job, get some money in. I walk up to a restaurant and say, oh, you know, no one wants to work here. So thank <laughs> you. I'm, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk past that and go to the next place. Why? Yeah. That is such a strange move. I don't understand. It's so why. privileged to me. I it really is. I get it. If, if you're struggling, I, I just don't get it. I honestly, I, I don't yeah. understand. I got to add one more thing, too. This is this this is some real talk. When places say we have competitive wages and salary and then say at $10 an hour, that is <laughs> not a competitive wage or salary. Also, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Just stop. Uh, I, like the amount of times I've walked into like a, a Panera Bread and I'm going to put Panera Bread on blast. And I don't know what their minimum is. I'm sure it's 10, 9, or 11. I'm. If you want to place a bet, I'm going to place it right now. And they say competitive. It is not competitive. You want to talk competitive? <laughs> 17, 18, 19 plus. That is competitive. That's what and even then, about. even then, like, oh, that's, mm, mm. stop <laughs> using competitive wage and it's 10 bucks. That is, I'm going to, Paul, I'm going to flip. I'm going to flip this table. This table is Ah, consider itself shooketh, but um, <laughs> so that's why I like tar- Target's one of the. I'll give them a pass because they actually have a fifteen dollar, I think fifteen dollar minimum. Yeah, and also they randomly give give their employees like five hundred bucks in a paycheck recently. Because, yeah. But um, the uh, the other thing, and can we? That, that's your pet peeve, and I understand. I agree with you. Here's mine that we absolutely need to stop immediately. Can we stop doing this? You apply for a job. Say you're putting in for a web design job. Okay. Mm-hmm. Matt, you're putting in for this job. You're going to be a web designer. You're going to be a web developer. You're going to be front end. You're going to be back end. You're going to be the typographist. You're going to be the designer. You're going to be the salesman. You're going to be this. And it's 20 grand a year. They take six jobs, put it into one, and then make a salary of 20 grand. Can we please stop doing that? Please, for the love of God, mm-hmm. just hire multiple people because we can't handle that. What's even worse, and I've seen this, I've seen this in the blood and flesh is when companies cut a position and then guess what? It's part of they other people's the jobs. Work. It just yeah. absorbs they, everyone. And, and then there's no pay raise. There's no pay yeah. raise. You just yeah. get the work and there's no pay raise. Yeah. I, Paul, that's table. This table, Paul. This table. Oh, man. Oh. CEO is my friend. We could talk. I mean, yeah. you and me, I think Woo. we are so fascinated with society, culture, politics, um, just this is slowly systems. A political show. You know what I'm <laughs> it really it's, is. It's political thoughts of the round table. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, change the title to political thoughts. Political thoughts. <laughs> I mean, but here's the truth, Paul. I mean, we question the system. You know, I hate when people say, "Oh, I don't. I'm not. I don't engage in politics. Politics doesn't affect me." At least you and I, it does, we can. Though. 
It does. I, well, yeah, that's, I mean, don't get me started. Like, the table is can only be shaken so much, Paul. Stop. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to break this table. Um, but, you know, we're, we are engaged. We vote. We, you know, have opinions. We speak out when we, we see things that we disagree with, you know, problems in our society. Uh, and that, to me, is good. That is healthy. We want people to say, wait a minute, this isn't right. Because if everyone can say that, then hopefully... Like- we can start I, really changing things. So I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't like oh, the old ahead. guard of everything's okay. We're doing because I know people who do this. I'm not going to name names, but I really wanted to. But I'm not going. <laughs> I swear to God, I had this conversation with someone, and they told me they said the United States is the best country in the world, and we're we're on the up and up. Don't 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 say anything yet. It gets better. So they said America's the best country in the world. It's on the up and up, and and so I said, didn't. You just last week tell me this is turning into a socialist hellscape. And they're like, yes, it really is. I'm like, but which one is it? Are we going up or are we going down? I don't. And they're like, we're, they're like, we're this best country in the world. And we're working every day to make it better. I was like, but we're also turning into a socialist hellscape. They're like, yes. I'm like, do you not understand the problem here? Are we going up or are we going down? I don't understand. Here's the thing. Another thing. This this has just become a rant episode, and I love it. Uh, and we didn't even intend for this to happen. We literally had a whole different episode planned. We can still do that one thing. <laughs> we'll do. We'll, we can do it on the next one. We're we're on the train. We are literally on a okay. train that is derailing into flames. I think people do not understand what socialism is versus communism. They lump it. They think it's the same thing. It is not. Another thing, too, true communism has never been actually done. What happened in the Soviet Union was not communism. That was a tyranny under the skies of communism. What's happening in China right now also isn't communism. I'm not saying that in the defense of communism. I'm just saying people don't think or read or understand the, the thing that i want to really make clear i'm a liberal okay mm-hmm. i don't want socialism i don't want communism believe it or not that's a thing i don't want either but i can still be liberal without wanting mm-hmm. those here's the thing yeah. that i don't understand and it is I, I don't understand why it is such a radical idea to say mm-hmm. you know what i like it here i do like this country i love living here but we could definitely be a million times better why don't yeah. we work towards that why do we got to have this thing of, well, if you don't like it, then just go. I like being here. Yeah. I do. But I want to work better at it and to make it an even better mm-hmm. place. See, but that's why, to me, a socialist democracy, you know, where you're combining, okay, the, the, so, you know, these these old tenants of. I, I, I will admittedly say that I don't know enough about yeah. the economics to say anything out of this. So I'm just going to. Well, here's, it. here's, I, I mean, here's, it. here's my, like, I guess, utopia is this combination of what we have now, but also with you know, some socialist, I guess, concepts, you know, we want a country where people are free to do things, right? We want, you know, if you want to go out and make a business, you can do that. But at the same time, we have to hold people like Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, you know, Elon Musk. We have to hold these people accountable. We have to tax them, right? You saw the article where these billionaires are getting away with basically not paying taxes. I don't think Amazon has paid income tax in like two years. Yeah. And ridiculous. Uh, two, we need safety nets. You know, you look at this country, safety there's no the safety right nets. People, I, we don't need safety nets for the CEOs. We don't. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. But that's where it always goes to. Yeah. When we three, do CEO, uh, yeah, safety nets. That's where it goes. Yeah, I think a lot of things too. My my big thing, it comes back to education. People yes. are just not educated, yes. and part of it has to do with. I mean, the government doesn't fund areas. Here's here's what I hate. Can I talk about another thing I hate? Hold on, is one that second, funding? Second, okay, go, go 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 go. One second, because you're gonna go off in a rant, but I gotta plug this in. Before you go off your rant. <laughs> plug it in. Plug it in. Um, so the governor of Florida, uh, DeSantis, is uh, trying mm-hmm. to pass a law. He might have passed. I don't know if it did or he's trying to, but it will require um, colleges to survey their students. And they students have to um, state what their uh, their uh, political affiliations and ideas are. And if a college doesn't have enough quote diversity, meaning they don't have enough conservative people, they will lose their state funding. And so, someone had put on there. It's like this is a really weird and interesting way to prove that conservatives aren't educated. And I lost it. I laughed so hard at that. <laughs> yeah, because that's basically what it's what. The, what I'm really just frustrated by the whole situation. I can't even find any comedy in it. I'm just pissed. But um, here's the thing. Funding is on how good the students are. So if students don't test well, they don't get funding, 
which means if they don't get funding, they can't learn to test well. Makes no sense. Are you Obviously, for collegiate or is this high, like? Uh, oh no, for for, for across the board, across the board. Okay. And then, of course, too. I mean, you ha- you have rich cities; they have more money to give to education. I mean, it's all. I mean, well, it's let's it's not, let's systematic. Not the fact that a lot of schooling, especially universities, um, act the same way in businesses that they're very top heavy funding wise. Mm-hmm. The presidents, the board, mm-hmm. sometimes even the faculty, and you know, they make insane amounts of money. And mm-hmm. then, I mean, it's it's top heavy just like any other business, which is a mm-hmm. bad thing. It is never never a good thing to be like that um i mean with public universities they obviously have to disclose their salaries oh my god the, uh, akron president makes millions millions mm. millions meanwhile they they shut down the baseball team because they don't have enough money it's like but do is that really the problem that's ridiculous that is he famously uh, i don't know if you ever uh you never went to akron so you probably weren't didn't hear about this but um it was a huge thing several years ago Mm-hmm. When um, the president, the president of Akron, and they had troubles with their presidents for a while there, but he laid off a ton of mm. f- of staff, ton of staff, he, and then he cut the baseball program. He did all this. Says Akron's really hurting or whatever, and then the next week, or maybe even days after he did that, with university money, he bought a twenty thousand dollar olive jar for his house, twenty thousand dollar olive jar, and people lost their shit oh i and i'm losing it, it right now it had its own spotlight on it in his house which by the way was bought by the university and the, so, paul this table is not going to make it this table is not going to make it the the home that the president lived in for the university of akron was outfitted with one inch thick white carpet this this mansion that he lived in was insane it was insane. first of all first of all First of all, okay, I get being rich and having your olive jars that cost $20,000. White carpet? Are you telling me you don't have marinara sauce or red wine? Are you telling me you have no pets or kids? White carpet? You must be that rich that if you like if one spills, you're going to have to get that redone. White carpet, you ain't, you are not coming back. Immediately break their ankles. If you have an Italian family come over with for Italian meat meats and sauce night, your carpet's meat fricked. Sauce night. I uh, can like Paul, I really don't even buy white or light are you clothes okay, Matt? because Matt. No, I'm not okay. You're so Ugh. shook tonight. Are you okay? I because the more we talk about it, the more I'm like, why aren't people aware? Why aren't people angry? Why is why does it feel like I'm just shouting in an echo chamber? Because that's what it is, and is it, truthfully, if it were up to me, a hundred percent, I'd get rid of everybody in Congress and just start. Let's just start <laughs> over. Let's just start over. Everyone, Democrat, oh, oh conservative. Man. Let's. All, they're all going, and we're starting over. Australia did do that, by the way. That did happen. Oh. Um, Australia, I think it was in the nineties. I could be mistaken, but it was in the nineties, I believe. And what happened was, is their Congress couldn't uh, agree on a, a budget. Kind of mm-hmm. like what would happen here, and then you fall off the cliff, and then there's, you know, the government mm-hmm. shuts down or whatever. I think that happened exactly one time in Australia, and they got rid of the entire Congress and started over. They voted all new people in. <laughs> so we, it can't happen, people. Let's do it. Um, I'm just sick of screaming into the void mm. of the boomers. So yeah. um, but I don't even want to go there. Don't even get me started. We've already half hour in this. My blood yeah. pressure is out of control. Why don't we continue? <laughs> Let's continue this next time. I have some yes. more thoughts. We had some right. some original stuff lined up that got so derailed. I mean, we are just out of care. control. I don't but. care. You know what? Son of a bitch, we're taking down the government <laughs> one brick by brick. Yeah. Well, next time, find out what my new table looks like. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, this table Lord. is not going to survive uh, much longer. Well, Paul, it's great as always talking to you. I always have a good time. And yes, as just always. Some, are some spicy Italian meats and sauces. That is. We'll have a meat and sauce night and take a Benadryl. <laughs> cool so Just gonna go in my kitchen, like cut up some salami. <laughs> <laughs> oh Ooh, man. Okay, I'm gonna go take. Cut. You have uncut yeah. salami in your house? No, I don't. I'm just messing. You just said cut. Up <laughs> you can cut up salami. Kitchen. I can't. I can't wait to come into your house and just in the kitchen see meats curing from the ceiling. Oh my god! Real quick, one other happy Ooh. note. So you know the saying, "The cat that got the cream." No, I've never heard that one. Okay, so there's a saying called the cat that got the cream, and it's basically, you know, like, okay, Paul, you know, was right, and Matt was wrong, and Paul looked like the cat that got the cream. The idea being, like, you know, that, like, and, like, a cat who got the cream, right? Yeah. So I fucked it up the other day. I fucked it up, and I said the canaries that got the cream. 
<laughs> How the hell did you get to Canaries? Because <laughs> the sea. I think it was like sea, cat, cream, canary. Uh, but yeah, sleep, Canaries got the cream. Uh, that's that's a new one. That's uh, a better add one. That I to, like that one better. You know, sounds like a band, like a fifties doo wop band, like doo wop wop. <laughs> canaries got the cream. Sounds like it'd be a TikTok trend or something. <laughs> yeah, I'll make the song and be like, Canaries got the cream. Coming for you and it me. It sounds like a coffee jingle. Do wop wop ba da ba da ba do bop ba bop. We're done. We're done. We're done. Okay, so this table's gonna go. We're gonna have some salami next time. Anyway, peace out. Later. Later.